course Aunt March prefers Amy over me. Why shouldn't she? I'm ugly and awkward and I always say the wrong things. I fly around throwing away perfectly good marriage proposals. I love our home, but I'm just so fitful and I can't stand being here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mommy. There's just something really wrong with me. I want to change, but I, I can't. And I, I just know I'll never fit in anywhere. Oh, you have so many extraordinary gifts. How can you expect to lead an ordinary life? You're ready to go out and, and find a good use for your talent. Although I don't know what I shall do without my job. Go and embrace your liberty and see what wonderful things come of it. Laurie sought his refuge in London and abroad. Marmy helped me find a place in the great city of New York. And so I stepped over the divide between childhood and all that lay beyond. Mrs. Kirk? Josephine! Oh. Yes, how do you do? Uh, Kitty, Minnie! Uh, this is Miss March. What? Her father was Colonel March. He knew your papa. Oh, damn, he knew her ballast. It was cold. Watch your feet, Mr. Costigan. It's straight. Oh, do come in, my dear. Oh, you're making that up. What have you promised? Dear Beth, Marmy's friend, Mrs. Kirk, has made me feel quite at home. My little students, Kitty and Minnie, are dear girls. How curious to grow up in a busy boarding house with no father and your own mother, the innkeeper. I felt bold on leaving Concord, but I confess I find New York rough and strange, and myself strange in it. Thank you kindly, Mrs. Kirk believes that I'm here for a brief interlude of sensational experience before succumbing to a matrimonial fate. And while there is surely no lack of sensational experience of every kind available in such a city, I hope, though I've had no luck yet, that any experience I gain here will be strictly literary, and that all events of a romantic or sensational nature will be entirely confined to the page. Our subscribers are not interested in sentiment and fairy stories, miss. They're not fairy stories. Try one of the ladies' magazines. You know that when first I saw you, I thought, ah, she is a writer. What made you think so? Oh. <laughs> yes, I, I know many writers. Uh, in Berlin, I was, I was professor at the university. Here, I am. Just a humble tutor, I'm afraid. No, oh, please, sit down. Thank you. You're far from home, Miss March. 
Do you miss your family? Oh, very much. My sisters especially. And Laurie. She is your, your sister? Oh, no. He's a friend. You like your coffee? Oh, it's... It's very, very strong. I like it. Oh, you have quite a library. Did you bring all these books from Germany? A few of them. May I? Of course. Most, most of these I, I could not bear to leave behind. I sold everything that I want to get my passage to, to come here, but, but my books, never. Mm. Shakespeare. Some books are so familiar. Reading them is like being home again. Will you be uh, returning to Berlin, Professor Baer? Friedrich. Call me Friedrich. No, uh, sadly, the, the fatherland of Goethe and Schiller is no more. Oh, I adore Goethe. My father used to read me all the German poets when I was a child. Really, that is most surprising. Well, my uh, mother and father were part of a, a rather unusual circle in Concord. Do you know the word transcendentalist? But this is German romantic philosophy. We throw off all our constraints and we come to know ourselves through insight and experience. But <laughs> it goes out of fashion now. <laughs> well, not in the March family, I'm afraid. It's just that with all of this transcendence comes much emphasis on perfecting oneself. Ah, uh, this gives you a problem. <sighs> I'm hopelessly flawed. If only we could transcend ourselves without perfection. Like your poet, Walt Whitman, who, who rides up and down the streets of Broadway all day, shouting poetry against the roar of the cards. Keep your silent woods, O nature. Your, your quiet, quiet places, places by, by the, the river, woods. But by the woods. woods. Give me Meet the streets, the streets of, of Manhattan. Manhattan. I think we are all hopelessly flawed. He is as poor as one might imagine an itinerant philosopher to be. Yet as the weeks go by, I see that he is unfailingly generous to all of us who live in the house. I am grateful to have a friend. <laughs> <laughs>